Okay, this is what the question says. It has some mass. Subway train is brought to a stop from some speed. That sounds low. Uh, in a distance. By a, a large spring bumper at the end of its track. Okay. What is the spring constant K? Um, so let me uh, sketch this out to make sure I correctly understand it. So we have some kind of stopping spring at the end. And we have some object with some mass that's coming in with some speed. So it's going to undergo a collision process. It's going to make a contact with the spring at, let's say, this is my x equals zero. And it's going to compress. And when it's compressed, this distance delta x, it'll be brought to a stop. So. I feel like I should use conservation of energy to answer this. Um, so let me spell out uh, the steps that you should go through whenever you are using a conservation law to solve a question. So I call this conservation law strategy. And uh, unlike a standard strategy, I don't really give you a strict set of steps to follow, but I will give you the steps that I go through. Um, the first thing to do is identify conserved quantity. And uh, this step, I guess, is more relevant uh, later on when there could be more than one quantity that's conserved. For us right now, it's really energy. Energy is the only thing that we have covered. So here, I guess what I'm trying to say is that you should feel comfortable saying that in analyzing this setup, that mechanical energy is conserved that the train, which starts out with some initial kinetic energy, that that kinetic energy, when it comes to a stop, is not gone. It's transferred into other forms of energy, potential energy, uh, spring potential energy. So, so you should first identify that. Once you identify that conserved quantity, then you should write down the conservation law equation, right? And what the conservation law equation looks like is you write down the conserved quantity in one snapshot and say that that conserved quantity is equal to uh, equal to itself in another snapshot. So in this particular case, what I would say is my total energy is what's being conserved here. So I need to decide on the snapshots to use. I'm going to say my snapshot one is that this position here where it has all the kinetic energy and none of the none of the potential energy and snapshot two is here where the train has been brought to a stop and there's a maximum amount of spring potential energy so with these two in mind i'm saying total energy at one is equal to total energy at two and the next step is to uh, expand on the conserve the quantities um, and do math, um, do algebra, <laughs> solve for the quantities you are being asked for. So let's uh, so write it out. So whenever we are talking about total energy, at this point in the semester, we are really speaking of the three forms of energy. There's kinetic energy. Uh, there's going to be one more form of kinetic energy we'll introduce later, but so far we have one. Two, uh, two and three, we have two forms of potential energy. We have potentially gravitational potential energy being involved, or we have potentially spring potential energy being involved. Um, in this particular case, it looks like it's level ground. We don't need to involve gravitational potential energy. Um, for spring potential energy, the expression is one half m. Uh, displacement from equilibrium squared. Uh, we did a derivation of that in the lecture. Go take a look. So um, I'm going to write this out for the two snapshots. So one half mass times V1 squared. Uh, let me call this V1 plus. And when I say one half M uh, X squared, this is going to be zero. Because at the initial stage, uh, snapshot one is where spring hasn't compressed at all. So this will be zero. In snapshot two, the thing has come to stop. So if I write down one half mv2 squared, really this will just be zero because the train has come to a stop. And we have plus one half, uh, not m, sorry, this should have been k. 
yeah, sorry. Um, this should have been K. Too many M's and not enough practice writing Ks. Uh, one half K times, now this is where the displacement matters, delta X squared. And I we have the displacement there. Okay, I think it gives us a fairly simple expression. One half MV1 squared is equal to one half K delta X squared. Okay, for the rest of the algebra, let me be just a little bit lazy and just use computer algebra system. I mean, uh, you know, I don't have to be lazy. I can actually do this by hand. It's not difficult algebra, but hey, uh, I have computer algebra system. Let's use it because we can. Uh, okay, so let me um, enter the equation. So I need uh, to define V1, K, and delta X. Uh, so with those variables, my equation is 1 half times mass times V1 squared is equal to 1 half times K times delta X squared. Okay, that looks about right. Um, so I say solve this equation for the spring constant K. Let's see what it gives us. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, so just the uh, one first element, so that's going to be my solution. Um, let's plug in the numbers. I have mass of, oh yeah, pretty high. Uh, 2 times 10 to the power of 5 kilogram, basic SI unit. Speed of 0 0.5 meter per second. Um, and displacement of uh, 0 0.8 meter. Uh, look at that, all the quantities. So spring constant, wow, that's pretty high. Uh, 78,125 Newton per meter. That's probably right. Um, 78,125. Yeah. Yep. Um, so fairly easy energy conservation question. Uh, it does involve spring potential energy. Uh, 